Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about my thread rack, some cross stitch that I'm working on, the fabric line called Arctic Playground, the Violet Craft quilt pattern called Mount Hood, I'll be doing a demo for how to clean your cutting mat, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson for so from Sew so Sweetness, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on this lovely Sunday. I saw everyone before the chat on YouTube and Facebook, lots of different parts of the country, other parts of the world, so thank you so much for joining me. So just as a friendly reminder, oh, you know what, before we get to that, I wanted to thank some people from for emailing me. On the Tuesday live show, I was sort of lamenting about this new shampoo that I was trying. It was sort of more of a cream, um, condition not conditioner but it was more of a cream rinse so it was similar to conditioner and it was kind of a natural thing so it it wasn't a sudsing shampoo you just kind of leave it on your hair and then rinse it out really well and I got some great helpful emails after the chat so thank you for that um, my hair is improving a bit it's less greasy and I'm definitely way happier with it the thing I'm not happy with though is that I noticed I'm sure it's just a coincidence, but lots more gray hairs are springing up, so not happy about that, but happy about um, nicer looking hair for sure. So just as a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but rather they're just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also a note on that, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics or projects that I talk about, just check that link in the description and you can find out more that way. All right, um, my favorite part of Social Sunday as always is the notion of the week. This week I decided to pull out my lovely thread rack. Normally I keep this on my bookshelf behind me, but I decided to pull out the rack because I had some questions about it and it's an easy way to sort of spruce up your sewing room and keep your threads at easy reach. So this is a thread rack that I purchased for about $15. Again, the link's in the description for the exact one that I bought. And as you can see, it holds all of my Aurifil threads. I've got about, um, I think it holds 60 threads in total. So plenty of space for my threads. And if you'll notice, I have two different spool colors. I've got orange spools on the rack and also green spools. And if you're not familiar with Aurifil thread, which is what I use, the green spools are 40 weight thread and the orange spools are 50 weight thread. So the numbers kind of work in reverse. Uh, the smaller the number, the thicker the thread. So for bag making, I normally like using the 40 weight, but in a pinch, if I need a certain color, like for example, this light purple I only have in the 50 weight, I'll use that for bag making in a pinch. Um, this is commonly used, um, the orange spools, for piecing for quilts. And I've purchased a few um, packs in the past with, um, spools that I liked. Um, a lot of these are from Tula Pink uh, thread kits, so that's why I purchased them because I'm a huge Tula Pink fan. But anyway, um, love how this looks in the sewing room. My rack is um, kind of uh, like tent shaped, so it'll stand up on a tabletop. I've also seen some hung on the wall. My particular rack does not have a hook on the back for hanging, but if you'd like to hang it, you could certainly um, push this flat and hang it on the wall instead. Okay, so that's my rack, the notion of the week. Let me just put this to the side so I have a little bit more room on the table. Okay, I have a thread, uh, <laughs> I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments what brand of thread do you, do you like or do you like to use? So everyone has their own personal preference. In fact, some machines that I found like certain brands of thread better than others. Perhaps you have an easier time finding certain brands and those are the ones that you like. So I'm just curious, let me know in the comments what brand of thread do you use? Okay, so if you've been around for a little bit, I've recently decided to take up cross-stitching. I showed some cross-stitch patterns that I purchased uh, maybe a month or so ago on the live show and my progress is very slow, but I just wanted to show you where I'm at because I got a lot of helpful emails with tips for a beginner, which I really appreciated because I certainly didn't know what I was doing. Um, I've actually decided to keep my cross-stitch stuff, um, at least the project that I'm working on, in one of my Minikins grab-and-go sleeves. I found that it fit really good, a hoop and, and some supplies inside, and it's got the nice handles and not too bulky to carry around. Um, but just let me show you in the side view some of the progress that I've gotten on my uh, project so far. 
as you can see, very tiny progress, but I, I've i been marking, I don't know if it's because I'm a beginner or it's just easy for counting reasons, but I purchased this red filament. It kind of reminds me of fishing wire. Let me show you what it looks like. So this is the packaging. It's an easy count guideline and it's just like a red filament. It's kind of plasticky and it's really hard to break. I marked off all of my squares. I didn't mark the whole um, piece of fabric, but I, you can see over here, especially the squares are marked off. I found that helpful, especially since I'm working on this particular cloth with the really tiny holes. Um, but let me show you, I've got my threads all organized and labeled by number. I liked that I could have um, all the threads that I needed for this particular project on this ring. I just found those online. And someone emailed me, it was super helpful, but they suggested that I purchase this magnetic board, which this is the magnetic board back here. This is the pattern that I'm working on. It's from Satsuma Street. It's an Etsy shop that I found. And here's the inside. So I, I've got my magnets here. And actually this was the square that I was working on when I last worked on this. So it's been very helpful having these markers just so I don't mess up with the counting because I was really scared since I'm a beginner that I would have issues with, with my counting. So anyway, as you can see, I only did a small amount, but it's a lot of fun. And um, I feel like all these tips that you've been emailing me were really helpful so that I just uh, didn't give up before I started because that's an issue too. Sometimes um, when a new skill or technique is overwhelming, you kind of just want to put it down before you start. So um, thanks so much for your helpful emails. I really appreciate it. Let me get everything stuffed back in here. Um, so Danny's favorite part of the show is calling out for all the bag ladies and bag dudes. So if you're watching, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and type in the comments right now if you're a bag lady or bag dude. I know I'm certainly a proud bag lady and I love um, the community that the term has created also continuing on in the Facebook group. If you're not already a member of the Facebook group, there's a link in the description and I'd love it if you'd join us. Uh, people post questions in the group, post photos of their finished So Sweetness projects. So it's a lot of fun and I love being a member in the group. So I hope you'll join us. All right, I'm going to slide over here and show you the fabric of the week. This is a fabric designed for blend fabrics. It's designed by Katie Tanis, and the fabric line is called Arctic Playground. So as you can see, the fabric line is a bunch of blues, a hint of pink, but something different than I normally see in a fabric line. And the prints are adorable, so I'm just gonna lay out a few of these prints. Really cute Arctic seals, and the same print in another colorway, this light blue as well. This one cracks me up. This is so cute. The little, their little heads poking out above the waves. And I really appreciate the coordinating prints because they're unique and they're not super simplistic, which I like. And here's the other cute one of the little faces poking out. And I also like that um, the fish print and the wave print has sort of a hand printed or hand painted quality to them. This is a great coordinating print, these little diamonds, and let me throw these last two prints out on the board over here. So a lovely, lovely fabric line. If I was choosing fabrics for a bag, I think I'd probably choose, let's see, I would probably choose this one for the exterior of the bag. Maybe either this one for the lining, just because I love it so much. Um, maybe uh, the diamond print for the lining as well. Um, overall, super cute. If you're interested in finding out more, you can check the link in the description and you can find the entire line as well as um, a fat quarter bundle if you're interested in maybe a smaller project or a quilt from this fabric line. And again, it's called Arctic Playground. Okay, so I'm super excited. Our sewing retreat is next week. It's June 21st through the 24th here in Chicago. We're busy getting everything ready this week. I know Violet's going to be helping me pack the goodie bags. We have goodie bags for everyone. And we also bring a lot of things from home to the retreat location, which is at a hotel. So we bring our ironing boards, irons, um, starch spray. We have a pop-up shop with corks. So we have a lot of things to get ready, but it's really close to the house. It's a lot of fun. And Danny and the kids help with the setup and they come periodically over the weekend to relieve me for like a dinner break or um, things like that because we're literally sewing till midnight on Friday and Saturday. So after we have two classes scheduled, 
We'll be making um, a cathedral window pillow on Friday and the airplane bag on Saturday and then free sewing till midnight and it's so much fun. I'm super excited and um, we have another retreat in September. Also excited for that and um, it's just a great weekend. It's a great weekend to connect with with other people and sew together in a group because usually I'm sewing by myself. So looking forward to that as well. So if you enjoy our live shows or if you enjoy the rest of our sewing videos on YouTube, I'd like to invite you now to, if you're watching on Facebook, hit the share button and share this sewing video with the rest of your sewing friends. Regardless if you're watching on either YouTube or Facebook, if you could hit the like button, which is the thumbs up, liking or sharing helps us out so much. Uh, Facebook and YouTube um, like seeing the likes and shares and so the more that they see the more they share our videos with people that might not have seen them before so it helps us out so much if you could either like or share and thank you so much for doing that we really really appreciate it all right um, in lieu of a book review this week I sort of have a, a quilt pattern to show you instead I'm gonna pop over to the the side view and show you it's designed by Violet Craft and it's called Elevated Abstractions Mount Hood. So this is what the quilt pattern looks like. I'm gonna have Danny zoom in just so you can see it because it's really super gorgeous. It's foundation paper piece and all of the templates are included inside. So there's not formal sewing instructions. As you can see, here's all the, the full size templates on the inside as well as fabric suggestions. If you're not familiar with foundation paper piecing, you paper piece in the order listed on the templates. For example, you would sew pieces one and two first, then add three, four, and so on. So that's how foundation paper piecing works. You're actually sewing the fabric to paper, and then you remove the paper, or if you use, um, I use personally water-soluble papers. So I leave my papers in and just, um, when the quilt is finished, when I wash it for the first time, the papers dissolve. So it's really cool. Nothing much to see on the back besides the, um, um, supply list but let me show you the front again um, this is designed by Violet Craft it's called the Mount Hood quilt and this is foundation paper pieced and she's got a large selection of other foundation paper piecing patterns on her website as well again link in the description and I think when I make mine I'm going to choose also um, monochromatic fabrics kind of similar to what Violet has chosen for her cover quilt maybe not the same colors but I like the idea of really small scale prints in combination with the solid. So it's a really cool quilt. And I'm, I was going through my uh, quilting stash earlier today and I was happy I found that because another project that I can make hopefully um, relatively quickly and compared to some of the larger quilts that I have in my, in my stash. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, have you cleaned your cutting mat before? So just let me know yes or no. Go ahead and type that in the comments right now. The demo for today is how to clean your cutting mat, which is really simple and easy, and you can do it with most things you might have in your household already. All right, so I'm gonna slide over to this side view so that I can show you in the camera. So I was rather embarrassed that I could not find um, a super dirty cutting mat. So mine is relatively clean. I have a few cutting mats. This was the dirtiest one that I could find, so I guess it shows that I'm not a uh, 24 7 quilter uh, I make quilts on occasion but I cut my pattern pieces out normally by drawing on the wrong side of the fabric and then using scissors okay so two methods for cleaning off your cutting mat and by cleaning off I mean in the cut the groove cuts in the cutting mat you might have noticed um, little fabric sticking out um, that needs to be cleaned off from time to time because that can prevent a clean cut in your fabric so the first thing you can use for doing that is just a regular everyday eraser so the rubber from the eraser would just kind of, as you bring it along the cutting mat, the rubber from the eraser just kind of pulls any stray hairs out. And you would just work this rubber throughout the whole mat or wherever there's large chunks of little fabrics pieces sticking out. The second tool that you can use for cleaning the cutting mat is a vegetable scrubber. So I just picked up this scrubber from Target. Um, you might have this in your house already but the bristles from the brush will also remove little stray hairs, not hairs, but um, little uh, stray threads from the fabric. And you can just kind of circle, make that in a circular motion like that. So either the rubber eraser or the vegetable scrubber or a simple, a similar brush with uh, bristles like this will get rid of 
um, threads in your cutting mat. Um, Danny's going to switch over to the front view for the second part two of keeping your cutting mats nice and clean. So what you'll need for part two is just regular distilled white vinegar. You probably already have this in your house. Um, I, prefer, I prefer to clean off my mats in the bathtub because most of my mats are not gigantic mats. So you'll need a quarter of a cup of the vinegar for every gallon of water. And you don't have to measure the gallon of water, you can just eyeball that. But for every, again, for every gallon of water, a quarter cup of vinegar, and you wanna make sure you use cold water. You don't want warm or hot water because warm water will bend or distort the cutting mat. So just put um, those two liquids in the tub with the mat for at least 30 minutes and that'll clean your mat off and sort of rejuvenate it. So as your mat gets older, it gets m more stiff and hard and cleaning the cutting mat in the bathtub kind of restores the, if you, you've probably noticed, especially if you've used a fresh cutting mat, it has, it's a little bit soft and when you um, bring the cutting blade across it, um, that's what makes it a self-healing mat. So by giving it a bath, it actually rejuvenates the surface and it'll actually make your cutting blades last longer. So having a rejuvenated mat is good for your cutting blades and good for your wallet because you won't need to buy blades as often. So again, these are just simple household items that you can use to cut the mat, clean the mat off. And um, when you notice the mat getting dirty or lots of little threads sticking out, just go ahead and give it a quick clean and periodically use that vinegar bath as well. Okay, so I'm gonna be answering some questions live in just a second. If you have a question for me, let me know in the comments, either a sewing related question, bag making related question. If you have a question about a sewing tool, let me know in the comments and Danny will be putting a few of the questions on the screen for me to answer live. Before we get to that, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. Last week's giveaways, giveaway winner was T.A. Drew from YouTube, and I've already contacted T.A. on YouTube on social media. Congratulations to T.A., and I have another giveaway in just a second. It's a really great one, so you'll want to stick around for that. Okay, so Danny's going to post some questions on the screen, and I'll answer some live. Carla says, is there a time when I should replace my cutting mat? If I've had mine for over 10 years and it is in good shape, would it... Uh, be considered still good. I would suggest trying to give it that bath with the vinegar in the water, the cold water. I think that'll really help with the mat. I think um, I definitely know when a mat is need not no good anymore and needs to be thrown away because we go through mats every few months for cutting the cork. So we actually just replaced our, our big 72 inch cutting mats for cutting the cork. We actually threw those out. So once the, we have really thick mats for the cork. I think they make them thicker depending on how big they are, but when there's kind of permanent grooves in the cutting mat, it makes it really difficult to cut. Like for example, if you're often using um, the same measurements on your cutting mat, which is what we do often because we're cutting half yard pieces of cork, um, over time we get really permanent grooves and actually we had a big, um, the mat kind of split in half because of the permanent groove. So we just threw it away and replaced it. but. Your mat sounds like it's in good shape, so try giving it that vinegar water bath. Pat says, how are the acrylic templates coming along? Fantastic, we've ordered them. Um, if you missed the, the last live chat, let me pull one up to show you what I mean. So we've purchased, um, we decided to start with the acrylic cutting um, uh, templates, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we just start. We decided to start with the minikins because they're m more or less smaller pattern pieces. Uh, we may branch out further into some of the other bags if the first set of templates does well. But this is just an example. This is um, the sidewinder sidewinder pouch in size small. Uh, we ordered the templates uh, last week, and I got an email from Ed and Robin that um, they should be finishing those up and shipping those off to us this week. So hopefully. Maybe by next Sunday we should have something uh, listing in the shop. We'll be selling um, a bundle of all the templates as well as the individual templates for each Minikins pattern in case you're interested in that. And we'll be listing those on the website. So we'll let you know on social media as soon as we get those in as well as on the live shows. Anne says, do you ever use zipper by the yard? And if so, will you ever carry them? I actually considered carrying them because our zipper sells so well. I was sort of on the fence about it, but I did order a couple samples in 
black and white because those are our most popular colors. I'll try to get those listed on the website uh, right away because I've had other people ask for that as well. And I'll also demo how to put the zipper heads on that because Zippers by the Yard is basically one really, really long zipper tape and you put the zipper pulls on yourself depending on how big of a piece of the zipper tape that you need to cut. So it's really economical because you're putting your own zipper uh, pulls on there and you can also swap out colors. So for example, if you have white tape, you can put different colors of pulls on like maybe yellow or red and kind of spice up your projects a little bit. So I'll let you know, I'll try to get that uh, situated and set up by next Sunday and we'll let you know on the live shows and on social media as well. Buster Bun says, will you be part of the Bag of the Month Club for 2019? Um, if you're not familiar, uh, I was part of the, I think the first four or five years of the Bag of the Month Club. Um, this is the first year that I've sat out. I, we decided, Danny and I decided that um, it would be uh, helpful for the videos because the videos were our first priority. We were really excited about doing them and we felt we were kind of on the roll with the video. So that was the probably the main reason that I decided to sit out Bag of the Month Club because we just wanted to, to devote as much time as we could to the videos because we get requests every week for um, a pattern that I have not already produced a video for and so we want to make as many of those as we can. I'm not sure if I'll do Bag of the Month Club next year or not. I'm, I'm thinking it might be a little bit of the same reasoning. Uh, we're just really excited about making more videos and tutorials and um, that's where I'm at in my head right now at least. Uh, Gwena says, what brand is your big size cutting mat, Sarah? Um, I don't know. I don't know they're in the basement, so I can't run and check really quick, but um, I'll let you know on the next live show. I'll have to look it up. Um, I know I have a really big 72 inch long cutting mat and we also have 54 inches. Um, the 54 inch ones didn't work as well for the cork because we have the corks a lot wider than uh, a little bit wider than that. Um, but I'll look up the brand and I'll let you know. Uh, we bought those online as well. All right, um, a few more questions. Michelle says, oh, how's your vacation, Michelle? I was noticing when reading your books that you didn't use foam for those bags. Was there a reason for that? Can I use foam instead for the fleece that was suggested? There's a very good reason for um, why I did not use foam in my first book. It's that um, I didn't know about it yet and Pelon Flex Foam and some other varieties didn't even exist when I wrote the first book. Um, I use different materials like uh, Pelon Thermalam, which is a fleece interfacing and some other stiff interfacings. If I was remaking any of the bags from my very first book, I would definitely make them, I think, almost all of them in foam interfacing because that's what I like to use today. Um, it was just timing, timing reasons. Um, but yeah, I would definitely use foam for any of those bags. Good question. Diane says, don't throw the old mats away. You can use them for the bottoms of bags or use over a good one when using cutting tools or hammering items. That's a great idea. I didn't even think about that. Um, you can cut small rectangles or whatever you need for a stiff bag bottom or maybe you want to make a a false bottom or a removable bottom, that would be great for that. Great suggestion. Thank you so much, Diane. Anita says, are you still thinking about acrylic triangle templates for bag bottom making? Um, I actually did not have that on, on my list, but um, I'm going to write that I'm going to write that down after the chat because that's a great idea. So she's talking about um, if you're making like a, a squared bottom um, where the pattern piece has like a little square, I think that's what you're talking about for uh, forming those uh, gussets at the bottom of the bag. I'll write that down. That's a really great idea. Maybe um, for different size, for different sized gussets, I can have that on the template as well. Fran says, will you be restocking your faux leather? We actually, for now, decided not to get any more, more new colors or restock any colors for now. It was sort of a slow seller and um, I don't know. We have limited space in the basement, which is where we cut our fabric. So um, for the time being, we won't be restocking. We, we might con reconsider that in the future, but uh, for now, that's, that's what the answer is for that. Um, Elena says, I'm very new to using cork or vinyl. When top stitching on these, what needle size do you recommend and what thread weight? That's a great question. We actually have a free video on YouTube, if you haven't already seen it, for how to sew with cork fabric. I personally use an Organ 9014 needle or a Schmetz Microtex needle. Thread weight, I still like using the, for, the 40 weight Orifil thread for that. And there's more tips in the cork video, so look that up on YouTube if you're interested in that. Connie says, I've made about five plus bags and I'm hooked, but my lining seems to be a little big. Any suggestions? So 
Um, an easy fix for making the linings a little bit tighter is to gradually increase your seam allowance on the lining. So for example, if your exterior seam allowance was a half inch, unless there's a different measurement for the lining, sometimes there is, sometimes the lining seam allowance is slightly bigger, you can always gradually increase the seam allowance. So that means you would start um, at the top of the seam with that half inch seam allowance and take it in a little bit more, so maybe five, inch, five eighths of an inch or slightly larger. And then when you come up to the other end of the seam, go back down to a half inch. So the reason you're going back down to the same seam allowances that you had for the exterior is so that when you put the bag together, everyone's, everything still lines up. So when you're lining up seams and such, everything will still line up. Um, but that bigger seam allowance that you ease in will help the bag fit tighter. And you can do those adjustments while you're making the bag. So for example, when you finish the exterior, um, make, made the lining, placed it inside, if you're not happy with how it looks or the tightness, you can go ahead and just, um, instead of ripping seams out, just go ahead and um, gradually increase that lining seam allowance. Lori says, will you have hardware and zipper pulls separately from the kit? Um, I think, are you talking about maybe the zippers by the yard? Um, I, I will look into having the zipper pull separately. I think um, the zippers that I stock are from by Annie's and I think they do have packs with just zipper pulls so you can kind of mi mix and match with your zipper tape. I'll look into that. I'll let you know um, as soon as we get that set up. Lois says, can you do a minikins uh, but for wallets? Uh, your wish will be granted. Um, I've already Oops, I guess I said too much, but <laughs> I've already written, um, I think two or three wallets. Um, I have all the patterns except for two written and um, the other two I have sketched out. So they're pretty much all finalized and we're gonna be doing bonus patterns this year, at least one bonus pattern. Danny wants to do two or three bonus patterns because he's been feeling super generous, but we're gonna be pl uh, putting a vote out for the bonus patterns. Uh, sometime soon because I need to get writing those bonus patterns. Um, I see him smiling over there. <laughs> Carla says, would you do any videos for patterns in your books? Um, I've thought about that a lot. Uh, the, the issue is the first book is now out of print. I have a few copies of the first book left that I'm selling in my online shop. The second book may soon be out of print as well. I'm not sure when, but I just have a feeling about it. Um, the, the the issue I see is having videos for books that are out of print makes it difficult because if people are not able to find the books readily, um, that's a problem because having a video for a pattern that they can't purchase or a book they can't purchase uh, is a slight problem. So I'm, I, for now, um, we've decided not to do any videos for any of the book patterns. That might change in future. For example, if uh, the rights return to me for any of those patterns, um, the publisher owns the rights to those patterns as part of the book, so I actually do not have the rights. That means, uh, by not having the rights, that means I can't do whatever I want with those patterns. They remain with the book. Um, the rights may return back to me one day, especially if the books are out of print, so um, that situation might change if that happens, if that helps. Um, Brian says, what is the fabric that has Paris on it behind you? Oh, good question. I usually don't have this bag out on the bookshelf, but because I had to put uh, take my thread rack down, I had to replace it with something. Maybe Danny can remove the question, Brian's question so you can see the bag. This is a Cumberland backpack, size large. This is my personal backpack that I use, especially in the summer. This is a canvas fabric designed by Cotton and Steel. The actual designer is Rifle Paper Company. Um, I don't remember the name of the fabric line is escaping me, but if you um, do a search for Rifle Paper Company, um, cotton and steel fabric and it is a canvas. It's really cool because it has different parts of the world in both text format and then they have uh, little drawings of different places with the names of those places and there's New York, Bangkok, um, I think I've got Sydney, Australia on the back of the backpack so really cool fabric. I like that it's canvas because it's nice and sturdy. It's also sort of a natural color so it doesn't get dirty easily. I think Danny spilled a, a can of orange pop. I could see it a little bit right here, but he did a good job cleaning it off. Do you remember spilling the pop on my no. backpack? I think it was when we were at Disney. I'm pretty sure it was you. I'm pretty sure it was not the kids, but. Uh, Maria says, do you plan any patterns using the mesh fabric? That would be great uh, for project bags or beach bags. I do have something planned, um, a beach type bag. Uh, I haven't written the pattern yet, so I might I might add more features to it. But yeah, I do have a beach bag planned. I feel like I'm kind of behind schedule as far as the beach bag goes because it's already well into summer. But 
just too many ideas and not enough hours in the day. Zena says, I just got a Juki 2010 for my birthday and I love it. Happy, happy birthday. What a great birthday present. Um, I'm not sure if you got that for yourself or if a loved one got that for you, but it's a great present. I love my machine so much and um, I wouldn't trade it for a different one, but that's just me. All right, how about, uh, I know Danny said there were so many questions on Tuesday and he had to, um, he couldn't post enough questions. There were so many good ones. So maybe a couple more just to make sure we get as many as we possibly can. Maria says, can I use your shoulder strap wrap pattern for car seat straps? I think you could. I think you would just possibly need to add, um, I'm not sure if you would want to have like extra large buttonholes for the strap to go through or not, or if that's not an issue. I think you probably could. I haven't thought about it before. That's a really good question. Um, Cheryl says, is there a reason that you want us to cut on the outside of the line on your patterns? Um, I guess not. I, her question is, um, on the pattern pieces, there's a thick black line on the outside. I have you cut on the outside of the line rather than to the inside of the line. I guess I hadn't thought of it. I, I just always cut to the outside of the line, even when I cut out someone else's pattern. So um, that's just what I do um, in my videos, either free ones or non-free videos. I do show cutting out the pattern pieces because I've had the question in the past, um, where should you cut out the pattern to the inside or the outside of the line? So I do show that in the videos as well because I want to show everything and um, cutting out the paper is part of um, making the pattern. So that's included in the videos as well. Um, Carrie says, do you ever have to make adjustments to your patterns after you make your first prototype? You seem to be really good at visualizing a bag in your mind before you make your patterns. Well, thank you. So there's some patterns where I need to make a prototype. And if I do need to make a prototype, I do it as quickly as possible because I'm lazy and I don't got time for that. So um, for the example of this pouch that I was holding up earlier, the cotton, the Minikins cotton candy pouch, because it has a side panel that kind of wraps around, it has to fit exact. I did make a prototype with this and my prototypes are usually just foam interfacing. So I didn't even sew in the zipper. All I did was cut out the side panel and the front and the back of the pouch and sew it together with just foam just so I could see how it would fit. A lot of the other bags that I make, um, let me pull another one out, maybe maybe this Renegade bag. So this one I did not make a, a prototype like I did with the cotton candy pouch with the foam. So this one I just started uh, sewing the fabric together right away. I can kind of visualize how things will go together and if I do need to adjust anything it's usually with uh, how the the side panels fitting because again it needs to fit exactly. One thing that I do which is um, anybody could do this but I have a bit of uh, bias tape over here has a tiny bit of a stretch so when I design my pattern pieces for the bag like this one I would take the bias tape and hold it along the sides of the pattern piece all the way around the pattern piece and then I would measure this and this would give me a good idea of where I need to start with my measurements for um, the side panel and the bottom panel. I usually need to make little adjustments but this gives me a good place to start so um, because I've mentioned in the past that I write all my instructions first, I draft the pattern pieces and then I sew, then I sew with fabric and so while I'm taking my step photos, I'm sewing and making adjustments. So sometimes I don't necessarily make a second bag. Sometimes I just make the one version or two versions if I wanna show two different types of fabric, but that's my process. And so using something simple like bias tape really helps me um, spend less time on fiddling with the pattern and um, more time on uh, tightening up my instructions. Um, Brenda says, do you scotch guard any of your projects? Um, I do recommend using scotch card, especially if you're gonna give the bags as a gift or sell them, I've used it in the past. However, since I have such a huge selection of bags to choose from, I might be giving any, be giving any bag um, maybe a couple months worth of use. And so I don't scotch guard my bags for probably that main reason. Many of my bags are, I don't wanna call them show bags, but like I take them to lectures and things. So they're you know packed away in a suitcase or in a box and they're not bags that get daily use, and so I don't scotch guard all those bags just for that reason. Glorimar says, can I substitute fleece for Decoville Heavy? So Decoville Heavy is, um, it's really hard to describe. The closest thing to it would probably be Pallon Peltex. It's a stiffer interfacing. I have some on the bolt. Uh, I'll show it next time, because it's in the kitchen, which is a weird place to keep interfacing, but I have a bolt in the kitchen 
It's a stiff interfacing, but it's thinner than the Paltex, and I find it's a little bit easier to work with. It's not super readily available, which is why I don't use it in a lot of my patterns. I might change, I might change that in the future, but um, fusible fleece and decoville are not the same at all. Um, I guess it depends on what pattern you're making, what type of look, if it's a slouchy hobo bag. Um, but you can feel free to email me if there's a specific bag that you're looking for to swap the Decoville for. And again, I'll show the Decoville on another sh live show in future. Dawn says, could you design a bag that has a flap um, you can change to different fabrics or cork, such as a day look or a night look? Oh, that's interesting. So do you mean like unhooking the flap and like either reversing it or switching out flaps? I wonder how the flap would be attached, maybe with a twist lock so you could get it off. That sounds really interesting. I hadn't thought of that before. But that sounds like a really cute idea for making one bag, maybe like a black bag, but like the flap is a different fabric and you can swap it, like reverse it or switch flaps to make it a whole new bag. That sounds really cool. And if you did that, you wouldn't have to take all of your purse contents out. You could just change the flap. Lauren says, please tell me where did you buy your shirt? Um, Danny actually gave me a little flack because I've had this shirt. I think I bought it when we went on vacation last year. Or maybe, yeah, probably the last year, and I've not worn it before. I don't know why. I got it from an Express Outlet store, and it's a knit fabric. The blue is knit, and this is obviously uh, lace, so it's not stretchy. Um, I'm not sure if you'd still be able to find it since I bought it last year, but he's like, oh, another new shirt. And I was like, no, it's not new. I've had it for a long time, and I bought it at an outlet store, so it was probably like $7. So She didn't mention she got a huge box from ModCloth two days ago. All right. The size of my closet box. No, 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 no. <laughs> Dawn wants to know, I'm, I mean a removable flap. Okay, yeah, that was, that's what I was thinking, a removable flap. flap. I'll have to think about how to make it removable. Like I said, the twist lock jumps into my mind as being the first thing that I think of for removable, but I don't know. Okay, last, last question, Danny. Why don't you read it? Oh, that's a, thanks, Danny. Um, <laughs> Danny said I should actually read the question first. Uh, Kaylee says the flap could be on a separating zipper. That's a great idea, because a separating zipper, you just unzip it completely, the flap comes off. Very interesting, I'll have to keep that in mind. Um, Anna says, could you make a review of your books? Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe next Social Sunday I will show one book, and the Sunday after that I'll show the next book. Great idea. Because I know the first book was published in 2013, so I wrote those patterns in 2012. The second book came out in 2015, so uh, they've been out for a little while, but I know a lot of people, especially people that found me because of the videos, only found me recently, so you might not have been familiar with the books before. I'll definitely show those on the next live shows, the next two live shows. Great idea. Um, Brenda says, decorative snaps for a re removable flap. That's a good idea, too. It sounds like there's a lot of options for remo a removable flap. I'll just have to think of them in depth so I can see which one sounds the best or the easiest to put together. All right, let's get over to the giveaway for the week. This giveaway is for patterns from two of my dear friends. I'm going to show you just what I'm giving away this week on the side view of the camera. So. My friend Annie from By Annie's, um, love her. She's a wonderful person, um, love her patterns, obviously love using her soft and stable interfacing. So a huge set of patterns from By Annie's and also a set of patterns from Serendipity Studio. Um, my friend Kay designs both garments and I know there's bag patterns in the mix as well. So a big set of patterns. Um, we're gonna flip back over to the front view. All you have to do to enter this giveaway is answer my question in the comments um, on social media. Let me know, do you have a special cushion for your sewing chair? Um, perhaps you've purchased a, a certain chair, something to make it easier for you to sew with, either on your back or on your bottom. I'm curious to know, just let me know in the comments. Maybe you've purchased a special cushion, maybe you've purchased a special chair if you do something special for sewing to make it more comfortable, or maybe you're standing up when you're sewing, just let me know in the comments. That will be your entry for the giveaway. I will choose one randomly drawn winner from all the entries at the end of the day this Saturday, and um, good luck with the giveaway. All right, so thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Social Sunday. I'll see you again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Have a great week and happy sewing.